Ahoj, this is Denka. This video is all about cinematic lighting on a budget. If you're gonna be filming with a smartphone, well, actually the principles are the same for any camera, so you can film with any camera, but for those who want to see specifically how it's gonna look like, if you're gonna be filming with a smartphone, I'm gonna be using today Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Let's start with the basics and that will be natural light. Natural light is free, but it's not always straightforward. You have overcast days. Actually, we have overcast day today. That will give you steady light, easiest. Then you have very bright, sunny days with blue sky. The light will be steady, but will be very harsh. Then you have sunny days with blue sky, but you have clouds passing by. So at one point you're going to have a harsh light, then you have a darker, brighter, darker. It can get very frustrating. And then lastly, you have those very dark days, rainy days. See, it's not always straightforward. Rule number one, never film yourself against the windows. You're not going to get a very nice look at all. If possible, as I'm turning, I'm getting more light on my face. Bring your face much closer to the window, tiny bit from the side like this is fine, or even fully facing the window. If you're going to be filming on a sunny, bright day and you're finding that you're getting way too much light into your face from the window, just close the blinds. If you have white blinds like I do here, you can close them all the way and you will still get the light through. It still kind of gets enough. You have to kind of look visually how much you want to close them so you get nice and steady look on your face. I mean, steady light on your face. Once you have that set, then you will check your background. If there are windows in the back and you will see that the light is simply overblown, it's bleached out, it doesn't look good, then you need to also cover the windows in the back. You need to use the blinds or the sheets or anything you have. Once you are done, then check what is actually in the background. If there are any objects you really don't want to have in the shots, make sure it all kind of looks clean. And you can even add some nice light lamp in the background to create a cozy atmosphere or something like that. You just have to kind of look and see what is missing in that room. What can I add to that room? So let me grab the smartphone and let me set up this room for you. First of all, I'm filming myself in regular video mode. I'm using just a selfie camera because I want to see myself as I'm explaining you guys what I'm doing. It would be very difficult if I would be using right now rear camera. And I'm sitting in the middle right here because I'm covering windows there that are over bleached. They're a little bit too bright. I'm gonna show you in a bit. I'm also covering green pillows that are behind me because I'm wearing purple. It just doesn't look very good. So if I move myself to the side, you will see right away those windows that are very, very bright and you see the green pillows, they don't look very good. So my option will be sitting here in the middle talking to you. Now, let me switch to portrait mode to see what kind of look you are going to get. I switched to portrait mode. The background got blurry. It looks a little bit better. I'm more separated from the background. Now, if you are noticing that the video is a little bit glitchy, it's just because I have to film at 30 frames per second on Samsung, but my other cameras are running. The whole video is actually being filmed at 24 frames per second. So I should not be really mixing 24 and 30. So if you see a little bit of glitching, it's because of that. I had to a little bit bring the brightness slightly up. I found that it was still a little bit darker, but it's already looking better. If I'm going to move away, now the windows are not as distracting as before, but I would still keep myself in a center to make sure it looks very good and I'm not seeing the green pillows. I could remove them obviously completely, but this is the look you would get if you will be filming yourself in portrait mode. It looks pretty good on natural light. So the window is facing me. I'm not seeing any windows in the back. I'm not seeing any overexposed areas. Another example, I'm in a different room right now. And luckily the light changed outside. So there is a blue sky with a lot of clouds. So I'm getting bright light, darker light, bright light, darker light, the hardest conditions. So as you can see, if you are looking at the image coming out from Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, right now the lighting is not good. I'm away from the windows. This is very bleached. This is very 
bright. I'm kind of dark. I'm not liking the setup at all. So there are different things I can do. First of all, I'm going to cover the blinds on that window completely. I am going to open the blinds and roll them all the way up on that window to get a lot of light in my face. And I'm going to move myself a lot back so you don't see as much the white walls. You're not going to get that much light there. So I'm going to blend in a little bit with the furniture over here. Let's do this. I'll be right back. So now I'm back. You're getting a horrible photo from that camera. You are seeing behind the scenes from that camera. I have closed the blinds. I have opened up fully the window and I positioned myself a little bit further back. So you're not seeing as much of the white wall. The image is already getting much better. Now I'm not sitting in the middle. I positioned myself a little bit to the side to cover basically those doors over there and I'm getting the furniture. I'm getting a better composition. If I would be sitting here, it just would not look as good. So I move myself a little bit to the side. Now, because this room is kind of light, sometimes when I film here and I get a lot of light, I'm not afraid to go bold. So I changed my wardrobe to bright red. It's gonna pop. You see me now in the other video I'm showing you. So depending what the room you are in, always pay attention to the wardrobe. Now the furniture is kind of, you know, getting the purple out of my sweater so I can wear it here or I could wear perhaps something green because there are green plants. If I turn around, I can even wear something completely different. Just to give you a different option, I switched to portrait video. So as you can see now, the background is blurry. I'm in focus. I'm more separated from the background. But now let's move on. Let's talk about studio light. If you want to achieve soft and controlled light, you will need to get a studio light. I've been through a number of lights throughout the years here on YouTube. And I can honestly tell you, it's not easy to find a good light on a tight budget. I used circle light with no fan, but the look wasn't all that soft. The light will also cover more than just a person. It will cover more of a room as it doesn't have the narrow direction you get with a soft box. I've had budget soft box lights here, but each light had a fairly loud cooling fan that you could hear in the actual recordings. My only two tips when it comes to buying a main portrait light is to go with a light that has silent fan or it is a panel light where you can attach a soft box and a grid for controlled directional lighting. The bigger soft box, the softer the light is going to get. I'm going to show you a lighting setup with several RGB LED lights. Those are cheap. I reviewed all of them on my channel. And this new one, small rig RC60B LED video light. That one is new in the studio. Um, I just got it. Now there are good things about the lights, but there are also bad things about the light. By the way, all the lights will be linked below the video in a video description. This light is small, so you can take it anywhere and the fan is fairly quiet. You can film indoors with it and outdoors. You can hold it in your hand or place it on a stand. You can attach different light modifiers. It has two modes, CCT and FX. I purchased Smallrick Mini Softbox RAD30 to get a very nice soft light. It has built-in battery that lasts 45 minutes at its maximum power and that honestly is a issue for me. So if you would be setting up the scene and need to do some filming, you will need a fast power bank as you will run out of the battery. I tried to charge it through a regular power outlet and charging brick, but I couldn't use it as it was charging. It takes three hours to fully charge a battery. I wish it didn't have a built-in battery. I wish you could change the battery. So I invested in this 140 watts power bank. I was planning on buying it anyways to charge other things such as my laptop and phone if I am in a location with no power. This power bank allows me to charge the light while I'm using it. You will see me using this outdoors and on locations as I cannot really drag with me that huge studio light. This is good for, you know, run and gun. This is perfect light on the go. So this is the starting point of this setup. Now, it's not necessarily looking that bad, but that whole area is kind of bleached. 
it's just, it, we can't get much better look. So where are we gonna place the light? First of all, as you can see from that camera, I positioned myself very close to this furniture because I really do like that reflection. But again, I'm not liking that overexposed area, but I like that leading, kind of leading into that lamp and I'm sitting a little bit on the side if I will be in the middle again. Mm, not that special. You want to make sure that you are always a little bit balanced kind of all over the place. So let me bring that light much closer. Obviously I'm going to close blinds on that window. I will see how the blinds will look here, but I'm gonna bring that light as close as possible to me. I'm gonna bring it from a little bit higher level pointing down. I don't want it necessarily right in front of me, probably on this angle. So I'll be right back. As you can see, I placed that light fairly close to me, pointing down at me and the power is just very minimal. We are getting some nice light from outside as well. So I have it, I think at 9% right now. So the light is lighting my face, but everything is kind of still dual in a background and I think we can change a few things around. So I'm gonna add some colors in a background. First of all, that lamp will go on. I'm gonna make that a little bit warmer in the corner over there. So let's just go for it. All right, I have tweaked a few settings here and there. So I added LED light there on the ground because I just want a little bit of an orangey, that warm look on the wall in that corner. The lamp is on. The lamp, I can't dim it anymore. It's a very strong lamp. So what I had to do, I had to bring the brightness on the screen or the smartphone a bit down so it doesn't look that bleached, even though it's still, by my opinion, a little bit too strong. So if you have a lamp which you can dim, would be way better to compensate. I had to increase the light on this small rig. So right now I'm at about 25%, I believe, 27%. And this is how you're gonna get this look before you even color grade. Now, I believe that the better look will be if I'm gonna be in a portrait mode. So right now this is just a regular video mode. Let me switch it to portrait mode. Now that I switched to portrait mode, the image got a little bit darker. So now the lamp doesn't look so overgrown. I'm separated from the background. There are two things I don't like. First of all, this light is still very cool. I look very cold compared to the warm background. I don't like the wardrobe either. I think I can go with some creamy look, lighter look, that will even out this whole warmer look. So I'll be right back. After all, I didn't go with the light top, but I decided to go with a dark top. And as you can see, it nicely blends in because the warmth, it's brown, it's very warm. And I brought that light a little bit to the warmer tones as well. So this is the final look. It doesn't all stop here though. Framing, composition, proper lighting will get you a nice looking image, but the final touches will happen in the post. I'm going to use color.io, a new tool for color grading. There are many cinematic looks you can tweak further. You can create your own adhalation and soften the image if it's too over sharpened. I'm going to simply take still from the video, upload the shot there, choose the look I prefer, tweak it further, and here is your final video. This was before any light was placed in the room, and this is after. Give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe for more, say hello below, and I'll see you in one of those next. Ciao, ahoy.